Welcome to today's EMN5. We're going to be talking about EKG interpretation, specifically determining the axis on an EKG. Now the axis of an EKG is the direction of electrical activity or depolarization as it passes through the heart, and specifically it's the average. And there's two axes we're going to look at here. It's the P wave, which represents the atrial depolarization, and the QRS complex, which represents the ventricular depolarization. So depolarization in the ventricle starts up here at the AV node, and it goes very rapidly through these Purkinje fibers, and then it, depolarization occurs very quickly from the inside out all over the heart. So now you can imagine all these little vectors, which are the white arrows, depolarizing, and because the left ventricle is so much bigger, the average of these vectors ends up kind of downward and to the left. So a normal QRS axis is going to be somewhere between 90 and negative 30. So why does the axis really matter for QRS? Well, it's going to help give us some very good information about the heart. For example, in a taller, thin individual, the heart might be a little bit more vertical, meaning the axis is a little bit on the rightward side of normal. That's in contrast to a little bit larger person whose diaphragm are kind of pushing up into the heart. It makes it a little bit more horizontal. Now what about a heart where there's left ventricular hypertrophy? Now these arrows are even bigger, meaning the average of the vector swings a little bit more towards the left. So this is in contrast to a heart that has an area of infarct, so there's no electrical activity here. That's going to swing our arrow away from the infarct. So let's talk about how to actually measure the QRS axis. First, we're going to start by looking at two leads, leads 1 and AVF. So lead 1, for example, is the measurement between the electrodes on the right arm and the left arm, with positive being towards the left. So in this example here, we have a positive wave in lead 1, so a positive upward wave. That means it's going to go on the left side or the positive side of lead 1. Now, if this wave is negative, that means it's going to go on the right side for lead 1. So we're going to start off looking at lead 1. That's a positive wave, so it's going to be over on the positive side of lead 1. And in lead AVF down there, we also have a positive, so that's going to be positive in AVF. Here's the AVF lead, which means when you average these two vectors, we're going to get kind of a left and downward, so this is a normal QRS axis. This is going to be an example of a right axis deviation. So in lead 1, our predominant direction is downward or negative. In lead AVF down here, we have a positive wave, and then if we average those out, we have a right axis deviation. So as we said before, that could represent right ventricular hypertrophy, remember that goes towards the hypertrophy, or lateral MI, remember away from infarct, or other issues with the lung, for example, chronic lung disease, COPD, or an acute PE. The one other thing to keep in mind is that sodium channel blocker toxicity, for example, TCA toxicity. All right, let's look at an example of left axis deviation. This is the one that's a little bit trickier because you can see this quadrant is actually divided. So here we have a positive wave in lead one. We have a negative wave in lead AVF. That means that this is the one time we have a third lead to look at, and that's lead two. So positive in lead two means anywhere in this half of the circle. Negative would be the other side. So on this EKG example, we have a negative in lead two, meaning we have a left axis deviation. Now what if you have a wave that's not exactly positive or negative? I and mean, here's an example in lead AVF. So that means it's an isoelectric wave, meaning it's going exactly 90 degrees across. Okay, so here's a quick summary table of what we just talked about. The two leads we're going to look at are leads one and AVF for a QRS axis determination. If it's positive in 1 and positive in AVF, that's a normal QRS axis. If you have anything negative in 1, that's abnormal. The one tricky one is where it's positive in 1 and negative in AVF, meaning you're up in this quadrant, then that means you have to look at lead 2. If lead 2 is positive, that's a normal axis. Okay, let's talk about the P wave axis. Now, lucky for all of us, the axis is very similar to the QRS. So it's probably between 0 and 75. And you can imagine this as it depolarizes from the SA node to the AV. That means that you should see positive waves in 1, 2, 3, and AVF. You should always see a negative wave in AVR. Now what happens if this is not what you're seeing? So for example, we see a negative P wave here in lead one, negative lead here in lead two, and a positive lead, we know that's wrong, in AVR. What does that actually mean? It means that there's an ectopic atrial pacemaker. So somewhere in the heart, pacemaker is starting from somewhere else and directing our vector upwards and to the right. So one more thing you need to look at when you have an ectopic atrial pacemaker is the PR interval. If the PR interval is less than 120, that means it's coming from somewhere junctional. If it's greater than 120, that just means you have an atrial ectopic pacemaker, meaning the start of this beat is initiated from somewhere else in the heart that's not the SA node. 
So three to remember for axis interpretation is that the axis represents an average of the vectors of depolarization that occur throughout the heart, either in the ventricle, if you're looking at the QRS, or in the atrium, which is the P wave, which is about 75 to 0. The quick tip for looking at this is looking at lead 1 and AVF. If they're both positive, that's a normal axis. Remember for QRS that axis deviates towards hypertrophy and away from infarct. And also remember for right axis deviation to add in these other lung diseases such as COPD, chronic lung disease, or an acute PE. For your P wave, make sure that it's positive in 1, 2, 3 in AVF and negative in AVR. If you don't see that, that means an ectopic atrial pacemaker. Here's some references and thanks for joining us on EMN5.